everyone and welcome to the Our Rights Podcast. Today we have Michael who wants to talk about how alcohol addiction and depression has affected him as a musician. So Michael, do you want to introduce yourself in a bit more detail? Uh, I guess so. Um, my name is Michael Underwood. I'm a singer-songwriter from uh, Fife in Scotland. Um, I don't know what else to say about myself really. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's very intimidating for people to introduce themselves, I guess. Yeah. I can imagine how it is. So I heard about your story, like how you went through alcohol addiction and that's caused your depression. And I know a lot of people go through things like that. So do you want to start it from the beginning, I guess? I think, um, I think more than um, putting you into... Uh, depression or a depression um, is a little bit wrong because I think alcohol just feeds depression mm-hmm. as a downer of course and that's what it does I mean I, I started drinking from an early age 15 maybe mm-hmm. 14 and a half and um, it was it was any time I could and it was anything I could get at that age and um, because I could sing um, I started playing in uh, pubs and stuff and doing karaoke and cabaret and stuff like that. And obviously coming of age, I started drinking a hell of a lot more because this was the, it was the environment I was in. Um, during, I guess, my early years, um, I started picking up the guitar, bass guitar to start with and started um, kind of teaching myself. My brother was, is also a musician, a very quite an accomplished musician, to be honest. Um, he plays a few instruments, and he kind of gave me a few pointers as well, and I started writing my own stuff, but I never, ever recorded it. And to be honest, that was always my dream, to record my own music. And mm-hmm. Once you get into that kind of um, scene of music, karaoke and cavalry and stuff, it's hard to get out because you kind of end up relying on the money um, and ultimately relying on the drink without you even knowing it. You know, uh, if you're out three nights a week um, in the same venue uh, and you're getting fed just alcohol and money, then, you know, you're not even going to think about it. It's, yeah, of course. And meanwhile, your dreams are going down the pan because you're not even thinking about it. And one day, I, th- I think one day the, the, those dreams creep up on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they, they bite you in the butt. And they say, hey, I'm here. What have you done about me? And you're like, well, nothing really. And I think because people don't think about that, the alcohol just puts them into more and more a deep depression because they're stuck in their rut. Um, I've kind of came to a conclusion that if you, t- if you, I, 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 my brother helped me. Mm-hmm. Um, I came to a very, very close suicide attempt. And uh, this was uh, September last year. And um, my brother instantly said, right, I'm taking you to a studio. I'm going to go and record something, take you away. We're going to be dropped off so you don't have a car. There's no shops for miles. There's nowhere to go. There's no alcohol here. There's nothing. I mean, just sheep and fields and music. And uh, we went there. I recorded my first single while I was there. And my debut track is the only one I have just now. and when I got home afterwards, I felt a, self, a sort of sense of accomplishment because I had made a start on my dream. You know, I took a first step. And n- now that I have a taste for that, mm-hmm. um, it, it's given me a reason not to turn to alcohol because alcohol was take, pulling me away from it. Whereas every little step I'm taking now um, to promote myself and to promote my, promote my single and to write more music um, is it, giving me more more strength, I think. And uh, I'm 128 days sober today. Great. Well done. Well done. Thank you. 
<laughs> so you said you started drinking around 14 and a half slash 15. Yeah. Can you remember your first memory of getting alcohol and starting to drink? Can you remember that moment? And then what do you think from that first moment started this whole trial of addiction? I, I don't know. I mean, I've, uh, back at that age, I suppose it was peer pressure because I was never a bad a bad lad. And I mean, I was never really in trouble or anything. I was good at school and, you know, um, I think it was just sheer peer pressure. I don't remember my first drink, if that's what you're asking, but... Um, Maybe around that time. I, I, I would probably just peer pressure, mm -hmm. you know, friends and their friends and ooh, look at him. <laughs> yeah, I think like, yeah, a lot of people go through peer pressure at such a young age. Like... It's just horrible what kids are going through, especially today as well. Yeah, certainly. The drugs are coming up. That's a lot more hazardous to like teenagers these days mm. as well. I, I think it's about focus. I mean, everybody, everybody has dreams, but nobody seems to want to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And if, what I'm trying to say, what helped me is, is taking yourself or having someone like my brother did, helping you to take yourself out of that situation, even just for a few days mm -hmm. and just chill out and do what you want to do. Find what it is that you want to do. And, 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 and if you have a dream, then work out your path to that and focus on that, you know, because every step that you that gets you just a little bit towards that is so rewarding. Definitely, definitely. And it's more, it's more rewarding than ruining your health, throwing away money and having a hangover every day. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, definitely, like, I, like, I kind of started drinking just around these days, but I do it for social reasons. And the thing is, like, people like you, like, you said you were working at, like, pubs and stuff, and they only fed you alcohol and money, like that is not good it's not a good environment to be especially when you're a young person and you're trying to like well, get far in music as well it was like 25 years i've done that mm -hmm. you know. what was your experience of the whole environment um i mean it was great mm -hmm. to be honest i mean um i had a certain way of um doing karaoke I guess and how I presented it and the music I played and the energy um, and in my little town it was there, there's like maybe maybe seven or eight different bars you can go to but in my little town if it was karaoke you came you came to us um, so I, I remember I just remember people jumping up and down and everybody having a good time yeah. um, especially lockdown hurt a lot um, the, the first lockdown hurt a lot because that meant I wasn't performing at all anymore. That I think that's what pushed me to the edge, um, really. It didn't stop my alcohol oh, okay. because I just, I, I just went to the shop and bought it. Mm -hmm. you know, but that was just, once again, I was drinking more because I wasn't performing. Mm -hmm. But alcohol was only making me more depressed and pushing me further. So did your addiction start during the first national lockdown or before? Oh, well before. Well before. I mean, my addiction started um, as soon as I started uh, playing in bars, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you said you were going in there like three times a week and you were getting fed alcohol. So yeah. you definitely did build but, up from there. But you're, for, you're forgetting what I was drinking through the week. It wasn't just the three nights a week at the pub. It was more than that, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was drinking at night time through the week as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, at, at least at least five, six days of the week I was drinking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It must be really like, what emotions were you going through while you're thinking, when you're drinking? Like, do you think it was such a relief to have it? Or, like, was it a stress relief, maybe? I think, it, yeah, a, a, a stress relief, an escape. Mm -hmm. Loads of yeah. people know about that, but I'll drink yeah. it as an escape from reality. 
like a crutch, if you like. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the reality is you're never going to do anything that you that you truly want to do. You're never going to leave your your own little stamp mm -hmm. um, in the world if if you're living out with this reality. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're constantly drunk, then you're not in this reality. And how you, how are you going to push yourself forward? And if you are like that, how are you going to be perceived by other people? So they can help you put your little stamp on, mm -hmm. on on this life. You know, it's um, uh, it's 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 not helpful. It's unhealthy. It makes you more depressed. Mm -hmm. And if you're already depressed, and this is your way out, then the, the, you you need to realize what's going on and maybe seek some help, because being depressed and just loading on something a downer all the time is is, is just going to ruin you and it was ruining me and it nearly took me <laughs> yeah definitely i completely agree with you like like at first when you start when you start to drink it's like it's escape from reality such a stress relief but then over time you see the long-term effects of what it can do to you physically, mentally, emotionally, and even yes. sometimes because you can feel isolated and not wanting to talk to anyone because you want to escape from the harsh reality, which is life overall. Yes. Um, I, I mean, it, it, it was close to ruining my marriage. It was, mm -hmm. you know, it was ruining everything. And all this time, all this time, I'm doing nothing that I want to do, that I want to achieve in my life. I mean, they're, they're not big asks. You know, I just want to record my own music and put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, if, if people listen to it, great. If it's not really successful, also great. You know, I, I, I just, yeah, I just, I'm happy that it's out there and people are listening to it. Definitely, definitely. So you said your brother was your biggest support system. I'll talk yeah, my, my brother and my wife, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, you record that day when you went into the studio and retreat yourself from that addiction. Yeah. Since then, have you been able to reflect back at that moment and say, this is such an accomplished thing that I did and bringing that advice to now, basically? Well, I do, I, feel, I do feel a sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. If I'm honest, um, the, the, the feeling has never really left me. Mm -hmm. And there are days where, I could, oh God, I could, I could really, really go for a drink today. But just remember and just, I, then I pick up my phone and I look and I've got like a, a, an email from you guys. Or um, someone's um, added my song on their Spotify playlist mm -hmm. or something. And then I remember why I'm doing it. I remember why I don't need the drink. And I can focus that energy on, on my music and on, you know, doing what I'm doing. Focus on your dream. It's, it's a powerful feeling. It's a powerful feeling. It wants to drag me backwards. You know? And like I said, just taking that first little step to doing what you want to do can be so rewarding just in its own that it could drive that horrible feeling of wanting to drink, pushing it into something else and making it a positive. Yeah, definitely. Like, at least you get that reminder every day that you're doing this for good reason, that you're not yeah. going back to that time where it makes no sense to you. And now yeah. I'm sent to you now and getting those reminders like people adding you on Spotify or like a message from someone or even like your brother. So you have your wife by your side. But without taking those first steps, without um, making a phone call, writing a letter, an email, going on the internet and contacting people to find out how you can get into what it is you want to do, you're never going to do it. So take those first steps and even getting one little email back or something just saying, hi, I mean, we can we can help you with this or we can do that, we're interested, um, would be so rewarding and on its own. Yeah. 
you know, but they're not going to be interested in someone that's that's just wasted all the time and you know, I mean, their life's going down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And how has your addiction, like the, your story, has affected your music overall? Like, do you talk um, about your music or...? I'm taking a lot more time now to play um, my guitar and my, my piano. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping, hoping um, to go and record an EP in the summer, mm-hmm. which is going to be really cool. I yeah. can't wait. <laughs> um, I, I wrote the title track for it about a month ago, okay. and I was like, going to be really good. I can't wait. Um, and... It, it, it's gave me focus. It's for it, uh, I kind of lost my love for music, even though I was doing karaoke, because karaoke is always everyone else's songs. Yeah, it's not your you own. Know? Yeah, exactly. And I can't help but when when I'm doing karaoke, it's obviously my voice that's singing, but I can't help but like sing just a little bit like them, mm-hmm. you know. And it, it's just mimicry, and I hate that. Um, but when you're writing your own music, it's it's obviously your own voice that comes out. I mean, who is it? You wrote it. <laughs> so it's it's given me a lot more focus. It really has. It's um it's made me like I said, it's made me practice more. It's made me learn chords that I never knew before. And um, yeah, I'm having fun with it now. I'm glad. I'm glad you do. Like I'm glad that you've gone from a time where you feel like it's the end of the world, if it doesn't make sense, sense to like releasing, like recording in the summertime of the EP, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. I, I, can, I can't explain how that feels for you, definitely. Like, do you think your story really reflects what's going to be in your EP? Or no. going in a different direction? No, I don't think... Um... I don't think my story will be reflected in the EP, maybe in an album. Mm. Um, I talked about doing an album maybe in a year or so, maybe a year and a half's time. Um, if all being well, I mean, obviously, yeah, being back on lockdown and I'm not going back to, I'm not going back to karaoke and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's... It's been like hard on the can on the on the on the finances to get money together for the studio and that I'm having to crowdfund and stuff. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but um, the EP is definitely in the works. Definitely, definitely. What do you see the future of your music going to? Like you said, you're going to have an album next year, but then where do you think you want to take that album to another level? I I don't know. No, I I have no like um I have no what would you call it like fame aspirations. Okay. I mean it, it's not it's it's not out with the realms of time, the, the the realms of possibility. I mean I, I think David Gray was like forty one when White Lather came out, and that, that was a severely successful album. Um, I mean, I'm forty now, so God knows. I don't, uh, uh, like I said, I'm I'm just happy to make. Mm-hmm. Me and my music to be able to hear it. Great, great, great. So I'm going to ask one last question just to wrap things up. What advice sure. would you give to anyone going through alcohol addiction, and how how could they get supported in like overcoming that? I think. Um, I think the biggest thing is is talking about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, your family could be going through so much without you even realizing what you're doing to them. And and if you if you if you talk to them and get support, go and speak to another family member and go and live with them for a few days. You know, organize something for you to do just to take you out of your normal environment, just for a few days, a few nights. And just and, and and really focus on what it is you want to do with your life. Forget about alcohol completely for a minute, and just sit there and think about what you want to do with your life, and make those first steps. Contact someone. Mm-hmm. Just talk, talk, talk to your family, talk to people on the internet, talk to anyone. Mm-hmm. And, I think that's uh, the best advice that you could give anyone. 
basically just talk to anyone that you make maybe in the streets you might scare strangers and talk to them and they'd be there for you definitely yeah everyone's there for each other and that's the main thing the, the, i mean i don't know um about the sort of nhs services or whatever when it comes to alcohol addiction and that i don't know how good they are um i never opted Mm-hmm. for any of that um i felt my my support group around me was okay but if you don't have a support group then i would advise contacting these people and contacting other people as well and just and just seeing what support there is out there because apparently there's loads yeah definitely <laughs> so thank you thank you michael for coming on thank so you very much. want to promote your music maybe sorry want to promote your music maybe oh yeah uh yeah, if you want to search for my music, uh, my name's Michael Underwood. Uh, my debut single is called Bad Before. It's available um, pretty much everywhere. Um, there's a few cover videos on YouTube as well. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> so people are uh, Yeah, also, um, if I can cheekily just throw in, if you do want to help out with my studio fund, um, the, uh, the it's GoFundMe. If you go on GoFundMe.com and just type in Back to the Studio, um, and it'll come up, Michael Underwood, and just give what you can. Definitely, definitely. So thank you everyone for listening, and see you guys in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>